good morning ladies and gentlemen hope everybody are doing fine let me invite you all to the saudi arabia for full time to discuss about the mangrove uh, forestation program and the mangrove habitat and ecosystem in the kingdom of saudi arabia as you heard about a lot saudi arabia is a desert land desert country with camels dates petroleum products and with the leading <clears throat> petrochemical production in the world apart from these achievements or this identity there are a lot of biological studies and competitive technologies are being developed in this kingdom as in the part of marine biology i have been involved in many type of marine research program in aquaculture as well as the coastal development of the kingdom let me share you some of the experiments that we have been conducting related with the mangrove conservation program i think my presentation is a first of its kind about the afforestation program in this mangrove conservation seminar saudi arabia which has its two sides from the eastern as well as in the western sides we have the coastal belt the eastern sides we have the gulf coast or the persian gulf and the western sides with the red sea and the red sea which is bordering up to egypt and the other side is bordering by the african countries like sudan ethiopia eritrea so and the west coast of the kingdom is fully stretched about 1700 kilometers of stretched coastal area which we have a broad one vast mangrove forest or mangrove vegetations and the same we can see in the east coast also in the persian gulf side also we can see a big stretched coast belt of mangrove forest and we all know that nature has provided the biological mechanism for protecting the coastal communities from the fury of cyclones coastal storms tidal waves and tsunamis and the mangrove forest constitutes such a mechanism for safeguarding the ecological security of the coastal areas and the livelihood of fish and shrimp people or these people those who are residing in the coastal zone and it is experience a wide decline all over the world now we know that the mangrove vegetation is losing by logging land reclamation and conservation and conversion of this mangrove forest for the aquaculture operations so it's a major crisis it's a major problem we are looking all over the world we can see that the declining or the reduction of the total mangrove vegetation all over the world the same type of activities because for the coastal reclamation and the coastal development many part of the mangrove vegetations we have lost and in saudi arabia majority of mangrove forests are found in the eastern coast of the reds between the jizz and the south and they been the north while in the gulf coast they are limited to dammam area it is widespread along the red sea in the area of al rab al rakab al mahab and wadi the haban and rabik area in jizan jidda and the farsan island the red sea coast of the saudi arabia sections as i told you before this is 1700 kilometers of stretched coastal area which covers about half of the entire length of the red sea between yemen and jordanian borders it resides both tropical and subtropical belts as it's the tropic of cancer is passing through the arabic and yambo the sea shore which provides a deposit environment 
Therefore, most of the coral vegetations are found in such area in the northern side. So we know that the importance of the vegetation, the mangrove vegetation, and it's a breeding ground for the fishes. And these different types of the shrimp, they come and breed and rear their young ones in this coastal belt. So it's a very important strategy we need to conserve the natural ecosystem because this is a protective ground for many kinds of aquatic organisms. And many places we can see this green vegetation has been destroyed or damaged due to the environmental catastrophes, calamities, drought, and by the sandstorm. So from this point of view, we have realized that we have to go for an afforestation program to conserve or to protect the mangrove vegetation in the coast field, as well as to replant or to, or to conserve the system. How we can conserve the system? By adding the mangrove vegetation to the, the lowest parts of the belt. Considering this importance and realize the need for protecting the natural mangroves areas in the island and coastal area, the National Aquaculture Group, this is the leading integrated aquaculture agency or the organization in the kingdom, as a strategy for their conservation program, along with the conservation of the Biosaline Agriculture Institute or center in Dubai. We have decided to go for a mangrove forestation program in the coastal belt of the Al Sharifa Island, which is one of the islands near to the aquaculture project area. The aquaculture project, which stretched about 120 kilometers of the Jidda coast, 120 kilometers considered the total length. So, while started this project, there was a little bit damage caused due to the conversion of this coastal area to the aquaculture productive lands as a strategy to conserve and to protect and perpetuate this coastal vegetation mangrove. We have started a strategy for the afforestation, for to conserve wherever the mangroves found to be space are damaged and lost. Based on this strategy, a forestation program that we have started. And the objective of this program was to increase the mangrove vegetation to the aquaculture project area, as well as the area, the coastal area and the lagoon where mangroves were found to be depleted due to the environmental factors like VAG, siltation, result by sandstone, and by physical damage, predation, and lack of rainfall. For this, a survey was conducted, which area we have to go for conservation and protection based on the satellite images. The locations were mapped, identified, and picked with the help of the GPS. And this is a diagram. This is the Red Sea coast we can see. Towards this, the right side, this is the Jidda coast, and the left side, which is towards the African coast. And the green spots we can see, these are the spots recognized or mapped by the satellite. The same as the images of the mangrove distribution, the green area we can see. And in between, there are a lot of spaces or the places we can see the loss of the mangrove vegetation. And in the Al Sharifa Island, we have noticed two lagoons there where mangroves who are totally absent. And the South Lagoon and the North Lagoon, we have noticed the, the total destruction of this mangrove vegetation. And we have selected and different spots have been identified with the GPS. And we went for the production, the propagation of the mangrove seedlings for planting in such areas. 
the coast is highly flourished with the gray mangrove, Avicinia marina. This belongs to Benamese. And it's a wide distribution and is found in the Arabian Peninsula all over from the Egypt and the coast of Africa and in the eastern sides, the Persian Gulf and the Red Sea. And very, the other community of this mangrove, which was the rice pora. But the predominant and the prevailing, the dominant variety of this mangrove species is found to be the gray mangrove, Avicinia marina. And we went for the preparation and the propagation of the seedlings. The mangrove trees normally blossom off flowers during the period of September, September to January, before, before the, uh, the start of the summer. And the mature seeds are available from January to May. And we have collected the, the seeds from the wine. We brought it to the uh, agricultural station, treated with some pesticides, the systemic pesticide is imidor, and at a concentration of 3 ppm for 30 minutes before seeding. So we have treated the seeds, all the seeds we have treated with these pesticides to kill the pest what's inside. And we fill with the black agricultural bag, as we know that, that we are getting these small saplings from the nurseries. We know that's a black agricultural bag. It is filled with peat moss and sand at the ratio of one is to one. And we have seen that one seed each in the plastic bag. And see sack, we arranged all these seed bags in a concrete tank. And we kept it in the, in the saline water. One fourth of the seed, we gently inserted it into the, into the black cover and allowed to germinate in the shade for 15 to 20 days, that means three weeks. After germination, the seedlings were acclimatized to seawater by gradually exposing them to saline water for to five to 40 days. And a slow increment of five ppt every time. So it started in fresh water and slowly, 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 we adapted these seedlings to live in the sea water. The salinity, every time we measured it with the refractometer. When they fully at times acclimatized to the 40 ppt of salinity, we transferred to the place, to the locations we already marked. And there we put it in a temporary nursery for another two weeks to acclimate the, the, the sea water. After that, we have collected and the pits were taken, planted it there. And after six months in the total share growth in the shade house, the seedlings were we have transferred to the selected area for planting. And after planting, every year we went for the survey. How many saplings were surviving? How many of them were got damaged, destroyed? And a survey report also we have checked. This is uh, the seeds of the gray mangrove Avicinia marina that we have collected. It's the mature seeds. And these seeds we brought to that shade house. And as discussed before, it has been disinfected or it has been treated with the pesticide imidor and put it in the black plastic bags. Around 25,000 of bags were prepared like this. More than 25,000. I think we have prepared 40,000 and our strategy was to plan for 30,000 seedlings in different areas of the coast of the island. And this is a stage, the sprouting, sprouting of the sea. And we can see that the small leaves are coming up. And this is after one week of seeding. And the first set of leaves already emerged after two weeks. And we are slowly pulling this, the tank with the saline water. 
as I told you before, every week we were increase the salinity of the water by 5 ppt. So first we irrigated with the fresh water. Then slowly the next week we raised it to 5 ppt. Then you know 10 ppt, 15 ppt. And by the end of the four weeks and five weeks is raised to 40 ppt. And this is a stretch. And now we can see the seedlings. So already developed. And this is a four to five, six leaf stages after one month of the growth in the shade house. Now the seedlings have grown up after two months size in the shade house. And it is in the seawater now. We can see the seawater we have arranged there. And it seems to be very healthy. Very healthy seedlings that we have. And the seedlings are growing. And this is the fully acclimated seedlings after three months rearing. It's a, it's a batch we have arranged in the shade house. Different types of batches. It was a continuous process. The planting started, continued for around two months. So it was batch wise, batch wise, we reared in the shade house. And this is a fully grown sapling. It is ready for transportation to the selected site. Now it's six months old saplings now. It is ready and it's fully acclimated with the seawater now. And these seedlings now we are transferring. We have collected these seedlings, these saplings from the, the tank where we acclimated with the seawater and it was transferred to the truck. The whole saplings that we were reared in the tanks are now transferring to the trucks to take it to the island part. And this is the trailer we used to take the saplings to the shallow part of the sea, the coastal area, because we cannot take the truck to that area, but we can use the truck, the <coughs> truck or the trailer. So we loaded it in the Vista trailer and the trailer, using this trailer, we took it to the different places of the coastal area and we planted and we kept it there for a small nursery. This is a nursery that we maintained in the coastal area. And we kept it here for three weeks for to acclimate it with the natural habitat, the natural environment, the seawater. The seawater we used for irrigate and to maintain the seed house where by the bore well water because we sucked it from nearby, the filter water. But this is a natural water, the seawater at the site, and we allowed them to grow for another three weeks so as to acclimate it with the natural environment. And after that, we went for planting. We have taken the pits by digging around one feet depth the side, and in each pit, we placed two seedlings, two saplings, an objective that if something happens, if some damage happens from one, the other one may come up. So we planted two pieces, two saplings in each pitch. And this is the planting. The early morning we have started the planting because you know that it's a desert area. We cannot continue the walk in the hot sun during the daytime. So all the planting we finish it before 10 o'clock. So early morning we have started the planting. And now this picture which very, very clearly shows that the planting of these mangroves at the different areas. And the planting, there are different methods. And we followed the clump method. The clump method, that means we plant the saplings as a group. In different areas, different methods we use. In certain areas, we used for the X method. That means the, the X, Y, the X shape we have planted. We marked a line on the coastal area and we marked like the sign of X, the symbol of X. Then certain area we went for the clump method. It is an aggregated because the mangrove, mangrove normally grows as a group. 
So different methods we follow. And this is a random method. The random method we we have taken the peaks in different places randomly and planted in different areas. This is another method. This is a random method that is randomly at a distance of three meters apart from each one at the entire area. These are the locations marked by the GPS, the South Lagoon and in the North Lagoon. It's a total of 25,000 of seedlings we planted in this area. And in the South Lagoon, we have marked eight spots, eight locations where mangroves are spaced. And this area, we have planted 3,000, 3,000, 3,000, 2,000, 1,500. As I mentioned to you before, like the clump method, the group, I mean the group method, or the X method, or the random method, like different types we have planted. So in different locations, different number of seedlings we plant. And the North Lagoon also the same way. And a total of 25,000 of seedlings we have planted. And the locations were exactly marked the GPS. And after one year, we went to the site and they have measured the growth of the saplings. And it has been noticed that many seedlings we are lost due to damage of the wind or the siltation or by some type of the crab attack. We have noticed that many flight. And initial growth also we have taken. And we want to know that how many saplings are surveying after our plantation of forestation program. And this is a second survey after a period of one year. We again went to the same place and have assessed the growth performance of the saplings. And we noticed that the saplings were grown well and it is fully adapted and aquine with the environment. And it is it's, it was noticed it's a healthy way and it is very strong enough to withstand the coastal sandstorms. And we understood that, okay, these saplings or these saplings will come up after a few years. So this was the study we conducted in order to propagate the seedlings and to conserve the mangroves in the Red Sea coast area. And it is noticed that it's around 89% of mangrove seedlings were surveyed. And they found to be very healthy in all the areas, 89%. And many mortalities we have noticed it is due to the siltation changes in the topography, as I told you in the beginning, it is due to the sandstorm and the accumulation of debris, competition and destruction by the crabs and some other animals in the coastal area. And due to the tides, high tides, the algal deposition we have noticed, and it's around to five to seven. So sites we have noticed the deposition of the algae, the marine algae. And many saplings found to be dry due to the lack of water because the, here the tidal effect, the tidal waves, tidal waves may have the difference between one and a half meter, the low tides and the high tides between. And many plastic bags, empty cans and broken fish nets were damaged the saplings. And around 39% of survival we got in this area. And it, it is it is saying that even if it is 20% survival we are getting from the mangrove afforestation program, it is a greater achievement. And we got 39% of survival in this area. So when we contemplate in mangrove rehabilitation, special attention must be paid to get the seed availability and to check whether we have to go for the planting, the spacing of planting and the nature of the water, salinity or fresh water and what, how would the location is a flooding area or there is wave or tidal actions and we did eradication, necessary technique, monitoring, community participation. We have to inform to the local peoples that we are going for instead 
program for conserving this mangrove vegetation in this local area. All these matters we have to consider if we go for mangrove afforestation program. And it is interrelated with many things related to the sand, the land, and the sea coast, which is linked with the natural system, especially in certain areas of the coastal area, which we have the stretched coral reef, the pristine coral reef, and the seagrass vegetation. So we have to consider all these parameters before we select this location for plant. And the mangrove ecosystem, we know that it's a productive ecosystem and a nursery ground for fish, crustaceans, and mollusks, and also provide a habitat for a wide range of aquatic life, while the land supports a rich and diverse flora and fauna. It also influences the microclimate, prevents coastal erosion, enhances aggression, and combats natural calamities such as cyclones and tidal boats. So we were very happy that we were able to do such as initiation to conserve the mangrove vegetation in the uh, Red Sea coast in the Al Sharifa island as a strategy to conserve the, the mangrove vegetation in the area. And it was the effort taken by the National Aquaculture Group, the leading aquaculture project in the kingdom. And as a strategy for to conserve this mangrove, or that those man mangrove vegetation have loosed due to the development of the aquaculture project. So it was a, 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 a policy of the, of the project, the aquaculture project to conserve and to protect the natural mangrove system. So that was the study we did. And we were found to be very happy. Still, this mangrove vegetation is going good in the, that location. Thank you. Thank you for your patient watching and listening this my presentation. And I welcome and appreciate you all to about the doubts, if any doubts. I'm very happy to share my experience and ideas and all experience. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I would like to express my sincere thanks to Professor Salom Nyanathanga, the head of the department, and the esteemed and eminent organizing members for this international conference for conservation of the mangrove vegetation. And also my sincere thanks to all of my friends who are watching this program. And my sincere thanks and gratitude to my beloved friend, Shaili Chichi, for inviting me to you a talk regarding this mangrove conservation program. Thank you. Thank you all.